In this video, I'm going to take you through the different features of the ID mixer that controls ID14. If you want information on a particular section of the ID mixer, then go to the video description for timestamps of the different sections so you can skip ahead. On a Mac, double click on the ID mixer in your application menu. This will launch the app and create a menu bar item in the top right of the screen. The mixer window should then open so long as your unit is connected and powered on. If you close the mixer window, you can reopen it at any time by clicking on the ID icon and selecting Show Mixer. On Windows, click the ID mixer in the application menu to launch the app. This will open the mixer window when ID14 is connected and also create an icon in the system tray where you can open the mixer window and change settings like ID14's sample rate and buffer size. Simply put, the ID mixer is the control center for your ID interface, allowing you to customize functionality and settings to make ID14 work best for your workflow. The ID mixer is made up of a few different sections. The channel section displays your analog and digital inputs, as well as your door returns, or in other words, the audio coming back from your digital audio workstation or computer. The master section contains the cue mixes and the monitor controls. Then finally, you have the system panel, which enables you to control your routing and other settings. We will look at the routing options available in more detail later in this video. So the channel section is what you will use to build up your main and cue mix, or in other words, the audio you want to send out of ID14, whether it's your full door mix going to your main speakers or a separate headphone mix with a click track to an artist you're recording. There are three kinds of channels, mic channels, digital channels, and door returns. And these individual types can be hidden using these channel toggle buttons in the master section to help keep things tidy. The two mic channels show you the signal from the mic and line inputs. The digi channels show any signal from the optical input and the door returns display the audio coming back from your computer, where the ID14 output in your door will correspond to the door return channel. For example, output one and two will go to door one and two and output three and four will go to door three and four. This will come in handy when sending out a separate artist mix. At the top of each channel is the customizable channel name. You can double click on this and type the name that you want to help organize your mixer app. Once named, if you forget the input type or get a little lost in the mixer window, you can hover over the channel toggle buttons and the type of input will appear under the name. On the analog and digital input channels, a polarity reverse button can be found below the naming strip for dealing with phase issues caused from multiple microphones, such as top and bottom miking a snare or the front and back of a guitar cab. On the mic channels, you have access to a plus 10 dB digital gain boost for boosting quiet sources. Next up, you have the pan controls to position your signal in the stereo field. You also have the stereo grouping button, letting you control the levels of a stereo source by grouping together two adjacent channels. The solo and mute buttons allow you to quickly isolate channels, which can be useful if you want to check that a particular input is sounding good without any distraction from other sources. Finally, you have the meter and the fader. The meter displays the dBFS value, which is the level that comes into your computer. If the input is set too loud, the peak LED will light up, meaning you have clipped your converters and could end up with some bad sounding distortion. We recommend setting your input so at the loudest point you're peaking at minus 10 dB. The fader is used to set the monitoring level of a channel for the particular mix you're working on. And when you turn up one of the input channels, you're actually making use of the low latency monitoring, letting you listen to your inputs without any delay. In the master section, you're able to toggle between different mixes, your main mix, typically used for your speaker output, and the cue mix, generally used for creating custom headphone mixes for your artists that you're recording. Simply click on the mix you want to edit and adjust the faders and pans on any of the channels you want to hear. If you want to preview the cue mix to hear what your artist will be hearing, you can hit the solo button in the cue window. You can also adjust the master level of the cue mix here too. The meters will show you the overall level of the cue and the chronometer along the bottom will show the level over the last 20 seconds. So you can see that the audio is being sent and you can also keep an eye out for clipping. Next, we have the monitor control buttons. Here you have a number of different functions that can be used to help improve your workflow in the studio. Talkback, polarity and mono, as well as cuts for the speaker and headphone outputs. This is also possible by selecting the output on the unit and pressing the encoder. 
the polarity button will flip one side of the stereo field whilst also activating mono, using phase cancellation to cut out the centre of the stereo signal and playing only the sides. This is a great way to get mix inspiration by removing centre panned signals in existing records or to check the sides of your own mixes and make sure that any reverbs and delay tails are sounding as good as they can. The mono button will sum the stereo mix bus into a mono signal which is useful for checking if your mix will sound good on mono sources such as mobile devices. The talkback button opens up a line of communication between the engineer and artist, either using one of the mic inputs on ID14 any mic connected to your computer, or even your computer's built-in mic input. This is configured in the System panel. The System panel is where you can change most of the inner workings of ID14. On the left-hand side you have the digital settings. Here you can select the digital protocol you want to use for your digital input, either ADAT or SPDIF. Below is the preferred clocking source for when you're using the digital input. Here you select whether you want to use ID14 as the master clock by setting internal, or whether you're wanting to slave ID14 from the digital input. If the indicator is red, then this indicates that there is no clock signal on the input. This could be because a cable isn't connected, or the wrong digital protocol is being used. A yellow indicator shows that a valid clock is available, but the sample rate doesn't match the current sample rate of the ID14. A green indicator means that a valid clock is present on the digital input and is at the correct sample rate, so you're ready to record. For more information on clocking and setting up ID14 with digital equipment, please click the card in the top right of this video to find out more. Below this you have the mono mode, letting you adjust which output is used during mono summing, followed by the ID button settings. This sets what the ID button on the unit controls. By default, it is set to scroll control, enabling you to use the hardware volume knob to control different software parameters. Watch the linked video to find out more. When not using scroll control, you can set the ID button to control ID14's monitor control functions, as well as dim, reducing the volume of your outputs for quick conversations in the studio, for example. And now we move on to the routing panel. The sources are displayed horizontally along the top, and the outputs are vertically on the left. To route the signal, click the button that lines up with both the source and destination you want. By default, the main mix is routed to analog outputs 1 and 2, which means that everything you've turned up in the main mix will be sent to your main speaker outputs. By default, the headphones are set to main mix, which plays exactly the same thing that comes out of your speaker outputs. However, if you have built a low latency monitoring mix for an artist on the Q-mix, and you want to send it to the headphones, you would select Q-mix on the headphone output. Door through allows you to directly route the signal from your door to a physical output, bypassing all routing and volume controls. This is useful if you have a separate monitor controller, for example. You'll need to be careful of using door through on your main outputs, as it will send full volume audio to your speakers, which might not be very pleasant. You will get a warning explanation every time you select it, just in case you press it by mistake. The other tab in the routing panel is the talkback tab, where you can select the input that you will be using for your talkback source. Here you have the option to use one of ID14's inputs, whether analog or digital, or you're able to use an external source, which could be your computer's inbuilt mic or even a USB microphone. When a talkback source is selected, that channel will turn into a talkback channel in the ID mixer window. An external source will come in on door return 4. A talkback channel can be identified by its solo and mute channels changing into a talkback button which will trigger the talkback. By default the talkback channel will be routed to the Q-mix, ready to be sent to your artist headphones. Once you have set up the ID mixer just how you want it, you can save it as a preset so you can quickly recall all your settings. To save a current setup, simply go to File, Save, and you can now give the configuration a name to remember it by and click Save. You can also export the configuration to send to friends or collaborators or to store along with your project. To recall a preset, simply go to File and then click Open. A list of your previously saved presets will appear. Choose the one you wish to use and click Load. The mixer will now change to that particular preset. Occasionally, we will release firmware updates for ID14 to add new features or to maintain compatibility with new operating system releases. The ID Mixer app will prompt you to update when any major updates are released by us. To manually ensure that your ID14 is running the latest version of firmware, simply go to the Help menu and select Check for Updates. 
The ID Mixer app will check if any updates are available and if so, will prompt you to install them. Simply follow the process through. We hope this video has given you an idea of the capabilities and powerful features of the ID Mixer and that you find it a useful tool to add to your workflow. For more information about ID14 or the ID app, please look at the product manual on our website or have a look at some of our other videos.